Hello, and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode number 98, brought to you every Friday at 12.05 Eastern time, well, most every Friday. Uh, I'm back again today with our special guest, Hayden. Welcome, Hayden. Uh, great to see you, Anton. It is uh, brutally cold here in Massachusetts. It is. Wow. It's, uh, I, I'm, I'm uh, I guess, sorry to be back from Spain. So it wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> super warm in Spain, but it was, uh, it was certainly nicer than it is here today. Amen to that. Yeah. Um, well, I have what I think is a really, really interesting tip today. It's um, it's actually way more than five minutes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I can today in five minutes, and and we can re, re um, come back to this tip a, a, several more times. I think. Um, so. Uh, I'm excited. Let's do yeah, it. We'll jump right in. Um, uh, so, um, and actually, after after we do the tip, I'll I'll talk a little bit about small concerns I have with it, but, um, but uh, overall, I think it's a great tip. So I'm going to kick off the timer and here we go. We got five minutes. Um, and here I have on this server, dev222, a REST enabled schema. Um, and I don't have access to this schema through SQLnet or I'm behind a firewall. I, basically, I just have HTTP access to this schema. Um, and, and it seems like you've chosen all the defaults for REST enabling it. Right. Yeah. It's just exactly straight defaults, just rest enabled it. And that's, that's it. Um, over here. And so I'll just point out, um, I have this table Anton drop me. If I select from it, you can see first name, last name over here on apex.oracle.com. I have an interactive grid. This is on apex.oracle.com. If I change HHH to Anton and I hit save, I come back over here. Um, and I, query it again, it made the change. So it, it did all the changes. Um, you're probably familiar with how, how I did this. Do you want to walk me through? What do you think I, what do you think I have going on? Well, uh, perhaps you have um, uh, an SSH tunnel and database credentials set up in the second workspace so that you can disconnect again to the, um, and maybe you're not even using the REST enabled. Yeah, well, I'm on apex.oracle.com. So at apex.oracle.com, I pretty much don't have a choice. So if I jump back to the application and um, shared components, um, I do, in fact, have a REST-enabled endpoint. So my endpoint here is dev222. Um, right. And so uh, for folks that haven't done this, when you create a REST-enabled endpoint, you basically give it a name and the URL. And in this case, the URL is um, it's just all of this through ORDs, plus whatever you have configured here in track. So in my case, it is, um, it is, I'll show it here. It's this right here. Uh, here it is. And, but you need credentials. And the key thing here is how do you get the credentials? What are the credentials? So my credentials here are dev222. I'll click uh, edit on that. You can see it's basic authentication, but this here is where this tip really kind of takes a little bit of a turn. This client ID is that client ID, and these this password is not the client ID and password. It's not the schema name and the schema password. No, mm, right. And this is where I think people don't know think this. So if in in this on dev two 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 in the workspace in this same workspace that's associated with this, I have a user. The user is Anton SQL D. It has no privileges. It's not an administrator. It's not anything else. But it does have this group assigned SQL developer. With that, with that SQL developer group, that user now has full access on this REST enabled schema to do anything at all, essentially. So over here, I can create um, on, on apex.oracle.com in my application, I can create anything I want. I have access to essentially all of the data in, in here, just using that user's username and password. Well, that's definitely, um a very simple way to do it. Um, just moving that one privilege over for a given user is yeah. sounds uh, both secure and easy. Yeah, it is. It's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. I can do an interactive uh, report on anything I want, any table at all. I'll say uh, objects. Um, so here, if I do that and I say REST enabled uh, SQL service, I can uh, pick this one here. Um, I can either I can even do a query. I can actually, and I'm going to do. I wouldn't normally do select star. But just to show that I could do anything here, um, this does this. 
user underscore objects, I'll create the page. Um, and you will go ahead and run this and we'll see that, um, that I now have all of the user objects, not from my apex.orgs.com workspace, but from my dev222 workspace. So I've got- Brilliant. And can you further also do this from connecting via SQL CL or SQL plugs? As that's, I love that question. Yes, absolutely. So I can do the exact same thing through SQL CL. Um, right here, I have SQL CL. I'm, I'm running that same workspace. I can say select star uh, from Anton drop me. Um, I get the last thing we had, Anton Nielsen. If I update it over here, um, I don't. I probably don't. Shouldn't be taking the time. I only 19 seconds left. So how did I do this? The key here, in order to do this, is you have to download this driver right here. Mm -hmm. If you look at the README, it tells you where to put it, but you basically put it in your SQL CL lib directory. Once you have this di driver in your SQL CL lib directory, you can then connect using this syntax. Let me stop my timer just to show it. This is the syntax you use. Um, so you connect there, there's your syntax. Um, and once you do that, it's gonna ask for your password. I'll put my password in um, and there you go. Um, so that's the five, minutes, five minute tip. I think this tip is actually worth uh, spending a little bit of time talking about some concerns I have. Uh, sure. sure. Uh, uh, I am. This is the first I am hearing this. It is coming a little out of uh, left field. I, it's uh, it's a surprising uh, utility. Yeah. And so before I get into concerns with it, I'll say what I do really like about it is now if I have a um, if I have a workspace that I'm accessing and I want to do file based development, right? I don't want to have to do everything through through the browser object workspace, I want to be able to use um, I want to be able to use Visual Code Studio to do my files. I want to do all my I want to use GitLab. I want to use uh, or GitHub, all those kinds of things. I I can also edit. Um, so I've got this uh, I've got this function right here. So I can run this function. Uh, I'm cheating, I suppose, because I've done my tip, but now we're still time. But if I want to edit that function, I can go change that file that's associated with it. Um, and I'll compile, I'll, I'll just save this file. Over here in SQL CL, I can run that. And then I'll, I'll do this again. And you can see it changed it. So I can do file-based development this way. Um, even v Visual Studio Code, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Rich, Rich mentions that. Um, so yeah, uh, it, I think it's, it's amazing. I, uh, but yeah. Uh, uh, managing, uh, uh, granting access to essentially the full um, breadth of the of the schema from the vantage point of a workspace is not something I ha I'm in the habit of doing, but I think I may do it from this point forward. Yeah, uh, there there are some some caveats here. You can't do some things with blobs, and there's certain things you you can't do. But um, boy, it's boy, it's interesting. Um, one thing that I, I'm a little, I have a little concern with is that I think people don't know about this. They don't know that if you have a user and you give them this role, this group, and the, the, and the, um, the workspace is, is REST enabled, they have this enormous capability. Well, they could just consult the, the help. The help explains everything. Oh, you would think so. I have not found any, I've searched and searched, I've searched and searched. I cannot find any place where this um, is, is described, that you get this kind of access by simply moving this over. I, I, once you have the, um, the group assignment, is it easy to query who does and doesn't have the privilege? Well, you can come and look at every single user by going through manage users and groups, right? You can click on every one of these people and check, right? Um, I gotta tell you, you should be able to in inspect this group, workspace, Apex workspace group users. You should be able to do that. Unfortunately, I'm gonna say this view has a bug in it. 
The bug is, and I'm going to come back to the comic here in a second. The bug here is that it doesn't show those three default, um, the, the three default ones that we were just looking at. Um, these, it, it doesn't have access to these because these three groups are owned by the internal workspace. It will only show you groups that you create yourself. So if you create your own mm -hmm. group, assign them to somebody, it will show here, but it won't show those three. So you don't even have a way to, to write a reasonably good audit on this. Um, I think this is something that really um, ne needs to be addressed because I think that there probably are workspaces out there that people have you know, granted these roles without thinking about it. And, and there's no warning or anything. I mean, this is a pretty, you know, when, when you look here and you say is administrator, is developer, you know, these all have a pretty good description of what's going on. When you do this, yeah, I have no idea what that means, right? So um, that that's my caveat in all of this. And when you click on group assignments there, does that um, show you? And, and, uh, sorry, um, could you navigate back to the previous screen? This one here? Uh, no, cancel out of here. Oh, sure. And oh, then, yeah. Oh, here, I guess, it, yes, it does. So you could, ah, that's a good point. You can look here. I hadn't really it's thought still, about it. It's not sufficient. Like you, you would want the... Um, yeah, yeah, no, you're right. I mean, you, I, I think that's a good point. You can just come here and look. That's good. Um, but you don't have a way to audit it, like through an automation or send an email if somebody got it. But um, it, you, you can see it here. Um, here yeah. you can create your own groups, but um, but this is this is a place where you'd at least be able to see it. So um, that's a good a good point. Um, so there was a question. Just curious, what error do you get if you try that without assigning the group? Ah, so this is really so. Fernando, I love this question. This is this error is I, 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 any guess, Hayden? If I if I put in a bad if I put in a bad username, a bad password, anything at all, what what URL do you think I'll get, or what um what error message do you think I'll get? I mean, I'm gonna I, I would bad password. I'm going to get the same thing regardless of what I do, whether it's the username is bad, the password is bad, whatever. I'm going to get the same error. I, I'm guessing invalid credentials. Invalid Oracle URL specified. It's always that. If, it's always in if you if you have the the wrong a bad username a bad password if this is bad it's always invalid Oracle URL. So um, so that was a, a great uh, question, Fernando. Um, so. Uh, so is the tip you know, Neil asks is the tip be sh be sure careful before assigning SQL developer group to users. Yeah, I think that kind of is the tip. <laughs> well, I, I hope no one is assigning that role without knowing what it is. I mean, why would someone grant the role without understanding? I, well, right, people do. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, you, you're assigning somebody a group, you don't know what it is, you, you put in there, it doesn't seem to do anything. Um, I think it's, uh, uh, oh yeah, so, and, uh, so Rich asks the question. So if you move the SQL developer uh, group, you'll get the error too. Yep, I'm going to do it right now. I'll remove this just to show you. Um, uh, I'll remove it, and then I'll come back here. I will connect um, with the same thing. I'll put in the correct password. We'll take your word on that. Yeah, I, I have to, I'm going to copy it and paste it just so I really get it correct. And there we go. Same thing, invalid Oracle URL specified. So you have no real, it takes quite a while to figure out what, you know, what is the problem. Um, uh, so um, I think it's great, uh, I think it's great capability. I'm not thrilled with like the, the lack of documentation, the lack of understanding, that kind of thing. Oh, Fernando, I meant trying to get the data with the right user, but with the SQL developer. Without, oh, so I think that's um, that's the um, the same thing that I just demonstrated. So I'm yeah. going to try to get the data, the right password user, but without the same. Yeah. So same thing. You get the same error. Um, it's always invalid Oracle URL specified. You see that error over and over again, and nothing more. Um, well, so uh, now I'm I'm curious. Um, uh, would you be tempted to use this uh, method to um, add? add to avoid have ever having to hand out database credentials, like I mean, theoretically, on, on a given project, uh, there's there'd be no need to disseminate database credentials. Oh well, you, that's an interesting thing as well. Um, I will say there, 
there are some other caveats. There are some things you can't do, um, blobs and uh, certain things. Also, um, the it's stateless. Everything gets committed. So, oh. I, and I kind of like being able to to not have everything committed. So if you do an update here, it's committed. It's you're done. Right. Um, yeah, that's that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the same as if you're using SQL Workshop, in, you know, the yeah. SQL commands in, in Apex, but. Um, you know, there are times that I want to go do that. So um, uh, I guess the answer is I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but, uh, but yeah, giving away database credentials is, you know, I, I don't like doing it. So, so. Um, but oh, yeah, yeah um, I, certainly this seems like the right approach. Um, if you are going to uh, give, give RESTful access to your, um, uh, to your schema. Yeah, I mean, there are other ways to do it. There are other ways that you can create users that have RESTful access and so forth. But this is pretty straightforward. It's right through the the uh, workspace. Um, uh, but uh, like I said, there's more to come on this because there are other things that you can do once you have this. And I think it'll be, um, uh, you know, valuable for folks because it making it 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 makes it easier to do file based PL SQL development. Um, if you don't have, you know, a, a real SQL net connection, if you don't, in my case, I often have to VPN into, a, you know, in to get that kind of access in this way. I don't have to do that. I can do it across yeah. multiple different places without being VPN in four different places. Right. And I can't bear to code in the browser. Yeah. Right. So, um, for all those reasons, uh, that's today's tip. We've gone way over talking about the topic instead of um, other interesting things, but um, I think I think this one was wor was worth it. So, yeah, it's a real um, uh, Easter egg. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, I guess that's all I have. Nothing, uh, nothing fun today. But maybe next week we'll actually come back with something, uh, you know, an off-topic tip or or something like that. Um, I can't wait. All right. Well. Um, I guess that's it then. Do all the things. Uh, subscribe, like, follow us on Strava. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.